Hello guys, welcome to our class of number 8 and on today's class we're going to do a little bit of more graphical things and start creating actually our map. Okay, so our map is com com a composition of very different elements in the game. So today I'm going to explain to you guys how to create the background because the map itself it's composed to something that you have interaction with the player so you can imagine something that is behind the player is the background so we have first in the order of appearance from the back to the front we have the background so that's the background they don't actually interact with the player they are just visually but we don't we don't handle it's not gonna it's not gonna hit our bird or do something with it and then we have the level of the player, so all the items, all the obstacles, all the enemies will be in the same level as the player in a 2D game. Okay, so the background will be behind the player, we have the level of the player, and we even have a layer that is in front of the player, and you can call it different names, but it could be called like four foreground or something like this so in today's class we are going to start um, dealing with the background all right so okay let's start with it these items right here when your project should look something like this and I'm going to show you guys how do you can import our elements for the background and how we can deal with these elements in the game as well as the order of appearance of them inside of our, of our game, okay? So imagine that uh, you have the, the elements of the game. So the elements of the game you can download below, it should have a link to these backgrounds. So you should have something like this, like this zip file, you just need to extract it here so it's going to extract to a folder and then with unit open you just drag and drop the folder of the elements that we have of the background the, the whole folder and drag and drop into the res folder and that way unity will import the elements that we need so you will have it right here and all the images right here all right so it's going to be the same way as you did with the bird but this time we're going to import the whole folder right here of the background and you can see the background we have many elements right here that we can use in many different ways to compose our map uh, behind the player okay so first of all one thing that we need to be clear here with the images so you should have the images inside of your res folder your resource folder open the background and then you have the six different images each of those unity understand them as sprite if you don't have this as sprite you can change each of those you can change the texture type from like a default or a normal map to a sprite that's the one that we need to have so all of them need to be set it as sprites and also right here we can change some a little bit of the quality that the images are being processed inside of unity so one thing that we can change with each one of them is here on filter mode we have something called bilinear we can change it to point so it means that it won't have any kind of filter in the image and another thing that we can change is compression right here it's usually set as normal quality you put none so in that way it's not going to compress anything in the image and the image will be shown in a the way that it was made so in the the top of the quality of each image so after you change the where it was after you change the filter mode to point and compression to none you hit apply just make sure that you make this for every single image that you have in the game just to be sure that you have all images in the game uh in a way that they are meant to be okay so point and none 12 all right so all of them are with no compression and with the quality that they are meant to be so all of these we can now start using in the game so how do we use these images in the game well we just drag and drop into the map 
or you can also go here on the game object and 2d object and sprites it works the same way so here in the images i'm going to start by the very background to the um to, to the top not going to be the same layer as the player but it's going to be like in different orders even though it's all backgrounds they're going to be set it in the different orders in the background so the first one that i'm going to be using you can these you can change you can use this image as the background or you can use the whole um color of the camera as the background it's your choice both look nice um just it, you choose which one is better i'm going to show to you guys how to make with both but in the end it's your choice which one you're going to choose so first of all i'm going to set this sky bg right here and drag and drop into the map you can see that the image is not as big as it should to match with the bird but right there you can change the scale of this image from one so it that's the usual scale to three that's the scale that i'm going to use in this way if almost fill the whole background of the camera i'm just gonna move a little bit right here and then we have our background so okay how do i know if the background is going to be printed behind the player or in front of the player unity set the order of how it's going to print with the order in layer so here we have the sky background and the order in layer is zero if you click on the player the order in layer is going to be zero as well so unity won't know which one is going to appear in front of what you can do is make this number less than the number of the player so let's say that this guy it's let's say something like negative one minus one so it means this number is lower than one than, than, than zero so it means that the sky background is going to be printed behind the player in this way right here okay so it's going to work with all the elements of the background each one of them is going to be printed, is going to have a different kind of order and layer in a way that we make sure that they follow the correct order in the render in the background. Okay, just make sure that the player is always, the order and layer of the player needs always to be higher than the background of the elements, okay? The background of the elements will be will have different ordering layers but they always need to be below zero in this case okay but we can go infinite with negative so that's not going to be a problem for us all right another thing that is important is like sky background right here we scale it to three it means that the order elements as well we are going to scale them to three as well so they're going to follow the same kind of proportion but you can use more than three uh, with the different islands right there just to get to have a different kind of layout. That's again, it's your choice. So what I'm going to be doing right here as we have three different islands and we have water, we have at least three different layers in the background. So what I'm going to make, I'm going to make my sky background equals to negative four. Okay, so negative four, I have this. So negative four for the background the islands may be negative two make negative one and then the water right here is going to be negative one okay so i make sure it's going to follow the way that i want so i'm gonna go with the islands right here so i'm just gonna drop the islands and then scale them scale x to three y to three I'm going to put all the islands in the game and then after I put everything I will try to organize them in a way that makes sense. Okay. And then all the islands I will make sure that the ordering layer is negative 3. Just to make sure that they appear in front of the background. But still behind the player so if the player passes in front of it it's going to be printed behind the player that's important all right so the last one that i'm going to put is the water again water will be three on x three on y and 
and then the water needs to be behind the islands so if the background is negative 4 islands negative 3 yeah islands needs to be negative 2 and then the water needs to be negative 3 okay now it makes sense just I want the islands to appear in front of the water it's your choice so just to make it work properly I'm going to make the like the background be negative 4 the islands be negative 2 in the ordinary layer and then the water um, the water to be negative 3 so the water is going to be in between the islands and the background so we're gonna have this kind of way of working okay and then the islands uh, one way that I think that is pretty cool it's try to make some island in a way that it works almost like in the horizon so I like to make one island let me see maybe this island I like to make this island in a way that makes sense something like this like in the horizon and there are their islands in between so right here maybe and then right here of course if you want you can change the scale to a higher number like four okay it's gonna work just don't make the island float in there doesn't make sense you let put or in the water or the limit would be something like the horizon right here okay so yeah if we move the camera right now you see that the background will have a limit so what you can do in order to make the the background infinite is to copy and paste the elements just to make sure that it will follow some kind of infinite some way of you can, you can make it in a, in a very different ways something like this okay and then also the background you can copy and paste just to make sure that when you play the game and you move the camera you have some kind of a more space right there so yeah in that way you can build your map you remember that I was telling you guys about doing a different background let's say for example I'm going to pick this background right here and I'm going to delete so we're going to have no background right here what I am going to be doing right here is to go to the main camera go to the background we have the color of the background and then I'm going to try to make a clear sky right here something like with a very clear blue color something like this so right now with the only color I don't need to worry about replicating the background because the background color the very background will be a raw color and I even can choose some other kind of colors let's say that I want to go like a sunset I could do something like this or like more kind of a this something like this or I could go like purple like I, you can go crazy with this of course the one that makes more sense is blue since we have the feeling of a very blue sky but is your choice in my opinion I like very much to use some like a, a solid color to this I think it makes more sense so in that way we can make our map work better okay so we can make our flat bird start to working better with the map you can go crazy with this you can make the map whatever way you want you can even port some different images right here just to make this just to make these images uh, like to have a different kind of object in the game so it's really your choice you can build your map in any way that you want so don't worry much about this um, don't worry much about the correct way of making the map or not that's not really important the important part is that you build a game that make a map that makes sense for the game so right now in the background does not really matter but if we have a bird it would be cool to have a bird in the ocean maybe a bird in the flowers doesn't really make sense to have a bird in space but that's your choice if you want to make a bird in space 
you can have it you just choose different images right here and you import them as the same way as we do just make sure that you follow the right order in layer and you can build the map okay guys so yeah for building the map that's it from this point uh, we can start worrying a little bit more about the background itself of the game objects how they are going to handle right now we have the game objects on the background static so if we move the camera they don't move in a different layer okay you can see right here that they don't move in a different layer they are static a way to make these objects uh, what we call parallax it's to make them with a different deepness okay so it, it's totally your choice it, it's not gonna make any difference in the game but one way that you can make them show in a different kind of speed in the game it's to make the game they move with a different speed so when we start moving our character to the front we can make these guys move to the front with a different speed as well so they are going to have a feeling of deepness in the game and that's what we are going to be doing on the next class as we move the character the, the background will move as well with a different speed and they're going to have a different kind of how can i say they're going to move as long with the character so it's going to have a feel of a parallax effect when we create the script but i think that's actually better to explain when you when you guys see that okay so only one thing to finish the class one thing that we uh, just to finish this class so, so the next we can start and move on with the parallax background is to open the script of the player movement and you can see right here that we are adding force to the direction and multiply it by force right here only one thing that I want to do is I want to create a new variable right here called initial speed and it can be equal to anything we can change that inside of unit editor but the thing is that in the initial the rb will add force to a direction that is going to be right in the map so it's going to be vector right okay so it's going to be basically vector right right here it means that it's going to be one on x zero and zero on y and z so it's gonna go right and then I'm going to multiply by initial speed. As we don't have friction in the game, when we add force to the bird, it will start going to the right as soon as the game starts. Okay, so we can start having our bird going forward in the game with the reach divide. So the principle is going to work the same way as reach divide does. The only difference is that instead of pressing space to go up, it's automatically going to go right with the reach divide. So if I play the game right now, you will have this. Okay, you can see that the bird start going to go right. That's what we want. We can change the initial speed of the bird from zero to let's say 100, 200, and it's just gonna go faster. Okay, and right now you can see that the camera does not follow the bird, but that's something that we're going to do on the next class. Try there as a challenge to make the camera follow the bird. But on the next class, I'm going to show you guys how we can make the, the camera follow the bird in a way that it doesn't seem uh, how can I, nauseating, just because we are going to make the camera only follows in the X axis. We're not gonna make it follow on the Y, so it's not gonna jump with the bird. Uh, but yeah, let's try to make it home as a challenge. But anyway, on the last class, I'm going to show you guys how to make the background fuse parallax with deepness and how to make the camera follow the, the player uh, with a feeling that doesn't sound nauseating. Okay, so that's it guys for this class. Try to make a very cool map with these assets and see you on the next class. Bye bye.